My name is Courtney Gilbert. I'm the Curator of Visual Arts at the Sun Valley Center for the Arts. And the exhibition that we have up this winter is called Behind the Sagebrush Curtain. The exhibition includes artwork by seven women artists who were all active in either Montana or Idaho in the second half of the 20th century. I think that what the exhibition shows actually is that there was this whole group of artists living and working in the American West who were taking the lessons and the visual language of international modernism and making it um, unique to the places that they lived and worked. One of the artists in the exhibition is Isabel Johnson. She grew up on a ranch in Absaroki, Montana. She studied painting at the University of Montana. And then she spent quite a number of years studying art at some of the most progressive art schools in the United States at that time. She moved back to Montana in the 1940s, bringing with her that training and began teaching at what's now Montana State University in Billings, where she had a profound effect on a couple of generations of artists. What I love about the work that we have in this exhibition of hers is that it shows kind of the arc of her career. From a work on paper she made in the 1940s of men shearing sheep at her family ranch that really shows the influence of regionalism on her work at the time. There's a, a painting of the Stillwater River frozen and overflowing. She uses these really loose gestural heavy brush strokes um, to create this kind of impression of the natural world. Jenny DeWeese, like Isabel Johnson, is an artist that brought with her to Montana formal training. She was born and raised in the Midwest. She studied painting at Ohio State University. One of her teachers was an enormous fan of the work of Hans Hoffmann, who was a huge influence on the entire generation of painters who would become known as the abstract expressionists. She and her husband Bob DeWeese wound up moving to Montana where he took a job teaching at Montana State University in Bozeman where she also continued to paint and to teach workshops working prolifically throughout her life while she and Bob raised five children and together they were actually kind of the center of an artistic community not just in Bozeman but across the state. In her work, Work, we see paintings that she did you know, not long after arriving in Montana, like Music Beat, that show the influence of abstract expressionism. She's taking the, the lessons that she learned about abstraction as a student and translating them into depictions of the world around her. Helen McGoslin is a painter who grew up in a prosperous family in New England. As an undergraduate, she studied philosophy and psychology at Mount Holyoke College, but she had begun painting as a teenager. And there's some evidence that she may have seen the Armory Show of 1913, the infamous exhibition in New York that kind of introduced European modernism to Americans and, and was shocking at the time. But for McCausland, it was really inspiring. And she devoted herself after college to coursework at the Art Students League in New York, where she studied Cubism and constructivism. She first visited Montana in the early 1930s and immediately fell in love with the state. We have a work on paper that she made of hanging pigs, this kind of loose um, ink wash drawing that I think reflects the influence of the Ashcan school on her work. Well, most of the artists in the exhibition are painters. Frances Senska was a ceramic artist. She has this fascinating biography. She was the daughter of Presbyterian missionaries who worked in Cameroon. After serving in the Navy during World War II, she used the GI Bill to take classes with the famous ceramicist Maya Grotel at Cranbrook Academy of Art in Michigan. She had learned a lot about international modernism, about an approach to art and design that embraced a kind of um, spare, minimal aesthetic. She took a position as the head of the ceramics department at Montana State University, where she really built the department from the ground up. She made functional ceramics generally, but we also have this lovely, simple bird. She used kind of muted glazes, very simple forms, spare decoration. What's really interesting is the way that she was able to synthesize traditional techniques and modernist aesthetics in everything that she did. 
Like a number of the artists in this exhibition, Jessie Wilbur spent much of her life in Bozeman, Montana, where she was the head of the printmaking department at Montana State University. She had grown up in Colorado and had studied art and earned a master's at Colorado State Teachers College, where she was introduced to Cubism and also post-impressionism and kind of embraced this modernist aesthetic early in her life. We've got two prints that illustrate kind of that embrace of modernist tendencies. One is called Weeds, and it looks like this kind of explosion of organic form on the page. It really feels very much both a depiction of the weeds in her garden or the weeds surrounding her in Montana, but also abstract expressionist ideas about composition and loose dynamic form. Another printmaker in the exhibition is Edith Freeman. She had a master's in science, which I think um, explains her love of her technique. She was a reduction woodcut printer. So she made prints that required her to carve away at the same wood block a little bit at a time for every pass through the printing press. Even though I think her prints really celebrate the beauty of Montana's landscape, they also don't sentimentalize it. There's a work she made called Down River East where you have a view of a valley in fall and then off in the distance are all these little smokestacks. So, you know, the human impact on the landscape is often present in her work. The artist Sarah Joyce, whose work surrounds me right now, her story is very different than the other artists in this exhibition. For one thing, she is the only one of the seven who was based in Idaho. Throughout her life, she was not just an incredibly prolific maker of objects and sculptures and paintings and drawings, but she was also an avid student. She was deeply interested in the psychology of Carl Jung and his belief in the idea that there are archetypes or symbols and forms forms and themes that appear in every culture around the world. Much of her artwork investigates that idea and she uses color and line really carefully to create compositions that I think emerged in large part out of her dreams and her subconscious thought. While she doesn't refer specifically to Idaho very often in her work, it's always kind of present. This exhibition is a really wonderful opportunity to take a look at the art history of Montana and Idaho, two states in the American West that have been underrepresented in the kind of art historical story that gets told. So I hope everyone will come in and spend some time looking at the work in the exhibition.